This is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. How excited are you, dude? Well, I'm trying not when to. When a large black man comes well, in this yeah, building, yeah, yeah. I go, also, ooh, Brian's going to be rock well, hard. It's also Adrian Peterson. So I'm trying to, there's, a, there's this, there's this um, phenomenon that straight men have like me where they have a tendency to. Get an erection? Gay out. Yeah. We gay out. I know. Okay. I'm surprised and, you didn't bring your wife, dude. Well, you guys well, are just all into black guys. <laughs> That's that's not is that too much? That's not public information. But well, no, we've talked is, about it. No, I understand. But <laughs> we've talked my about wife, it, right? My wife, I would never do that to her because um, she's Adrian Peterson. Yeah, I think, but he's everybody's type, including a straight man like me. I mean, it's fair he's to a handsome say, dude. What the symmetry and and the whole thing going on, and and he can dance. Well, when I see him, and he can dance. When I see him, I get PTSD, and I'll bring it up to him. But last time I saw that man, he rushed for about two hundred yards and beat us fifty to three. That's, I haven't seen him since. Yeah, that's I was in shellac. That was in two thousand and five or two thousand six. Okay. Did you so know we him haven't back seen then? each other? But when I see him, dude, it's on site. <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, dude, do you remember when you beat the brakes off of us? Yeah. Because I do, yeah. bro. You and now do. what's up, daddy? No, no, do this. I'm hoping he's a little out of shape. I have a great You've idea. You've been dancing? Dance this. No, I have a much better idea. Challenge him to a foot race and tear both your hamstrings again. That's I would easy. not challenge him to a foot race. No. That guy can run. Yeah, I would imagine he's a little fast. I've seen him run with pads on. I can only imagine naked. Yeah, yeah. He could drag a car behind him and be faster than me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different thing. We got a lot to talk about. I feel like you and I haven't seen each other in a hot second. Well, I'd like to talk for a second about the fact that you you souped your truck up to the degree. Don't say soup, though. Whatever it is, whatever you're saying. I know, but don't say soup. Okay, you you tricked it out. This isn't Fast and Furious. Okay. Don't say soup. Well, your truck could be in Fast and Furious because, frankly, it's a I beat most of the cars on there, yeah. It sounds like. I sent I sent Brian a video of the exhaust and uh, sent him the video and underneath put not dot well, four dot you. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like you know when in the movie where they go they just hear the ground start to shake and they all go, it's coming. Are you talking about Jurassic Park? <laughs> like the orcs. You're talking about Jurassic yeah, yeah, Park yeah. where the water's going. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is, and that's what your car feels like. Overkill one thousand. Is that the company? That's the company overkill. That would make sense. Well, one thousand represents the horsepower. It, so your it, truck it, is it should, a thousand horsepower. Is that legal? How is that legal? It's not. But the thing is, is uh, even a thousand being generous because it's actually ten fifty. I hope a bunch of environmental activists glue their hands to your truck. <laughs> I will piss on them. Well, you'll just dra- <laughs> you'll take them for a drag. Yeah. No, I'll just pee on them. Yeah, but that yeah, they'll be like whatever. And then I just. <laughs> It's I mean, it's that, insane. That is. It's a, so much fun though because Jay met us up in Sacramento, so me and Tiger flew up there. And then we spent all day at the shop. Then we drove back. It's about a six-hour drive back. And you just spent all day at the shop just watching him tweak no, it up? No, uh, that, talking about it. And then we're, we're coming out with a new uh, show for it, All Around Automotives. So if there was a bodybuilder as a car, that's what your car is. That's what your car looks like. That's the Adrian the, Peterson of trucks. That's, yeah. It's big and it's fast. Yeah. But and it's, it's, big, it's damn not, good looking. I feel like it's the... I don't know. Is it the Adrian Peterson or is it, it just, it feels like the rock of all. This cars. scared me. Not a lot. So I was like, oh my God. And then I take off. Oh my it's God. It's a 10 second truck. Is that fire coming out of the back? Yeah. Is it fire coming yeah. out of the back? Brendan. It's a 10 second truck. <laughs> Brendan. <laughs> Brendan. What? No. <laughs> it's your everyday driver. You can't have a race car. But I had that to go outrageous so on it. Huh? I know. It's not going to stop there because there's only one way to go up from here. There is. You can be a bigger blower on there. No, no, super you can't tanker. have a I can bigger, get to 13, 1400 easy. You don't need a bigger blower. Why not have the baddest dyno in all the land? It, there's, a, there's a whole subculture and it doesn't, of people that oh, are into yeah. this shit. Oh, huh? yeah. It doesn't stop there because w- the connection I made through like Kibbe Tech with Ryan and Josh at Overkill and then the yeah. boys at Toyo Tires and ADD, yeah. all that, I'm like, dude, how dope would it be to do this to other people's cars? Yeah. So then I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do a show where I give back and build people's dream cars. And then some of my dream Such cars a as idea. a kid, like the Lightning. Since I was a kid, that was like the North Star Ford yeah. Lightning. Could never afford it. I'm gonna get a Lightning, redo that, turn it into a current Lightning with over a thousand horsepower. We'll do Typhoon, Cyclones, dope people are, like are Willie B. People that you would do this for are they all 14 years old or are they adults? Like you oh know, no, they're not cucks. So that's why you're not gonna be interested in it. Yeah, they're not cucks that just go, I'll take a Tesla. So wait, hold on. Oh, check this out. Big so black wait. guy, come to my house. No, no, no listen. No, no it's for that people doesn't. that are actually not cucks. You can't call me a cuck. Yeah, you're cuck. I'm not into it. You are though. 
but it's not for you. But don't turn me That's why when cock. I send you that stuff, I put not for you. Yeah. I mean that. He said that of art. I got that text. I got just the back of his truck and it said not for you. <laughs> not dash for dash you. And I'm like, and I said, Brendan, please leave it there. You could be the opposite nah. of the fan base I'm going for. Yeah. But no cucks apply. Can you please not? <laughs> so it's a no like, cuck zone? Like if you, if it's you're, a no cuck zone? Like no, nobody's going to watch my shows. Like I can't decide. Do I want to do this or get a Tesla? That's not a, how I talk, dude. It is though. Anyone that drives Tesla talks like don't this. Don't talk. Don't turn me into a cock just because Anyone I Anyone buys Tesla can dance and also suck cock, right? No. no. Look, Dim the because, rules. Just because I'm into beautiful black men doesn't mean that And I'm dicks. A t- <laughs> and huge cocks doesn't mean that I'm gay. No, you're, it, no it means you like Teslas. Cock. No, it means you like Teslas. <laughs> we know how this goes, dude. Oh, my God. But yeah, it was fun, man. I can't wait. Never been more excited about something. I guess so, man. I'm, I can't wait. I'm, let me let me, let me me suit my body with my magic mind see if this gets me into dude, 1,000 horsepower. Dude, if I take this, I'm going to challenge Adrian Peterson to a foot race. Is that right? Yeah. I'll be in my car and he'll be in that. But I won't let you. I won't let you. No, I don't want... I can't blow out my hammies. Even just... Yesterday, I had to coach up these little bastards playing baseball yesterday yeah. and just had to run, sprint for a ball. And I was like, Daddy's hammies are tight. Oh, yeah, you get tight up. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I need to warm yeah. up for these little kids. I have taken to stretching now. I, I, do, my, I do my morning and it's evening It's more cuck stuff, dude. <laughs> no. Oh, hey, hey. That's no. the difference. Please. Please. No. I wake up, I drink my green juice, no. and Listen, then I no. stretch. Yes. And I jump in my Tesla, and I don't even have to think about no, no, it. No, no, no. I did, I did de- dips to failure yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cuck stuff. I did cuck dips stuff. to failure. Yeah, yeah. I did deadlifts. Deadlifts and a I thousand house poor tr- house po- horsepower truck. That's no. the difference between us. Okay. I did da- deadlifts. I, I did dips with no weight. You know, that's silly. I did deadlifts. I did dips, no weight. <laughs> no, I drink please. my green juice. And I just jump in my Tesla and I just love that I can just get in it and just go. Yeah, I, I do. I don't have to worry about gas or nothing no, like that. No, I do. I just show up. I just show up and then here I am. <laughs> no, no, I show up and then, but don't say that. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm a man. I'm a man. I <laughs> couldn't be further from it, bud. Your car's a little too big. It's very tall. It's not for you. Yeah, it's just not. I don't know why you're you the have, opposite demo. But I don't know why you have sand colored. I, I'm surprised it's not black. It's cuck stuff, right? Why is it? But your color. Well, well, why don't you go with all black? Well, your color is a little bit like. It seems mushroom brown, right? No, it's cam. It's army. It's tan. That's the color. Though. No, that's, a, that's between, the definition though. of the color. It's called sandblast tan. I guess it is sand. You know, I don't do black, B. Why? Because every cuck would pick black. Hey, okay, man. You can't choose my color. Because this black. is why we can't talk cards. Why? Tesla, do you have all white? I just want white. I don't even think I got fancy. white on white. Do you have all black? I just want black. I try to go as gay as I can with my car. I try to go literally. Yeah, you I do to, have the cuck version yeah, of a car. It yeah. is a three. You gotta go, you gotta go, it's an iPad with wheels. Yeah. You got to go unique colors. There's, you're going to see two RXs that are black, red, blue. You don't see many sandblasts. Because there's only a thousand. Have you always been in a truck? So you were always in the race cars. No, I like everything. I've had Raptors before. My first car was an F-150. Mm. I always like trucks. When I met you, you had the the M6. Yeah, BMW. BMW, yep. But that's like, for you now, you're like. (laughs) Yeah. You just grow up, you know? Now, now, um, yeah. All right. Well, you got to. Now, I uh, I left Sacramento at 4 a.m. Because I had to rush back to make the Misfits pay-per-view, which was Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis. Tommy Fury KSI. And when I talked, you I called it. Back. By the way, you called that fight to AT. My question when I saw it, I went, "Did he have some inside info?" No, that's so stupid. I hate that narrative when people are like, "Oh, he got the script," or right. "This is all fake." I, no, no, no. I, I would mean, I just mean, did you talk to somebody who was close to Dylan who said something like, "I'm going to fucking tackle him"? If it goes no, who would say, "Hey, Dylan's going to get beat up on the feet and then he's going to do some antics"? Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't take the fight. That was very. That was crazy. I, see, I don't, th- I don't find it, you say that. I've had way better calls than that. Uh, this one to me is not like I didn't even know it was a thing till Jay and George text me. They're like, dude, your prediction's all over the place. I'm like, the silly prediction that's going to be a DQ? Like, it's everywhere. Mm. Like, what? I, I've had better predictions than that. I don't know. I mean, that's. He, I thought that one was, landed, that was exactly a shoe. 10 punches, they say. Yeah, he, he, he's not a boxer. And even if you look at his MMA fights, like his striking was, it was not good. Mm-hmm. And then now you're going to do a guy, not that Logan Paul's a full-time boxer, but at least he focuses on it more than Dylan does. So it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah it was. It it's was, a bad product. As far as, if you're a true fight fan, it's a bad product. But I think the takeaway is it's it's the hype. The hype and the buildup, real legit fighters can take away from what they're doing. Not the Dylan Dennis girlfriend stuff, fiance yeah. stuff, but as far as the attraction, because... That got more impressions on social media than any Tyson Fury fight ever. Anthony Joshua, Canelo, Izzy, 
John Jones, yeah. Brock Lesnar. Like they got more impression, more eyeballs than any combat. I think sport. it really, I think it really took an emotional toll on on Logan Paul. From what I could feel, after. I don't know. I don't. That that could just be. I'll a tell thing you why too. I think that it could was, be just a thing. I think it, I that think could it, be a narrative. But I think I, t I think I'll tell you why. It, that guy's been way. through a lot. This Bubba. is his. This is his. This is his. His girl. His fiance. He wants to have a family with, and the guy's calling her a whore, you know, on a microphone. And I think what happens in that case is, first of all, that that's awful. It also hurts your feelings. Also bad. I just hate. I hate that shit. Just for the record, I don't like it. I fucking hate it. I don't think anybody does. I just think it's. It just goes way beyond the pale that you're attacking his fiance who has nothing to do with you, dude. I just think it's really bad. That and and. But also, I think for Logan, like, can you imagine if he had lost and then he's got to deal with that? So that that puts added pressure. I'm not saying. But here, here's here's my here's one of my issues with these fights. Yeah. Every fight, if, if, notice every fight Logan takes. Jake's a little different, but when it talks to KSI, when it comes to Logan Paul, name somebody they fought that could have knocked them out, or that it was it, it was dicey, whether or not these huge favorites. Name one fight where it's a big risk where they get knocked out. Well, I think Tommy Fury was a legit boxer. I mean, or in terms of you're talking about Jake Paul. I just yeah. said take oh, out I'm Jake sorry, Paul. Sorry. We're, let's stick to what All we're right, talking right, about. Right, got it. Logan Paul. Yeah. KSI, yeah. name one fight they took where they had the potential to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. one? The Floyd Mayweather sparring match where the guy's 140 pounds? No, right. can't knock you out. I'll tell KSI you versus Logan Paul? No. Yeah. So these fights are all safe because these guys have to protect their online presence where they don't want to become a meme. Right. So they're fighting, and it's a safe fight for everybody involved. Right. And that's why they're not exciting. Tommy Fury's eight no. He's not some knock. He doesn't knock anybody out. Right. It's a safe fight. Right. Right. They're safe fights. Yeah. They don't want to become a meme. So right. for Dylan Dance, he's like, I just don't want to become a meme. I, I might lose, but I've already done. But I'm, gonna, I'm already yeah. getting paid. Everybody knows my name. I got more followers. I, you ain't making a meme out of me. Mm -hmm. So that's all they care about. Right. Because at the end of the day, the people, these young fans that tune into this they don't know fighting right they like the build up they like all the antics and all that they don't care about the actual product mm -hmm. now as a as real fight fan someone that has an eye for it you're like what is this dude right that's the difference yeah that's kind of how you feel yeah um i stopped what ksi tommy fury i turned off after the third round i went i'm not gonna wait on this. saturday you i was like this, this. is this yeah. is stupid yeah but the good for, there's a lane for it more power to him yeah but the, the my i'm always interested in um, th there is a lane for it, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily that inspired, and it doesn't mean that it's I disagree that good for anybody. I think no, I disagree. I think it's inspiring. Yeah, because so you you have a young son. When we say you can do anything you want to do, this proves you can legit do anything you want to do. It, you don't have to come from the slums of Bronxville, New York, and become a fighter. You don't have to. You can come from Calabasas. You can come from Malibu. You can grow up not boxing. You can grow up not fighting, and get more eyeballs fighting than any but any real professional fighter in the world. You can do anything you want to do. Yeah. So for those young kids, that's inspiring. I don't think that getting eyeballs is a um, getting the most eyeballs is a value system that I would promote in terms of because you can get eyeballs doing crazy shit. That compromises who you are, your character, and really even our culture. And I think that vulgarity, if if to use a word that that is to sound like an old guy, vulgarity has been promoted to an art form. I don't think it's are good you, for are, any. Are you referring to Dylan Dennis? Yeah, I'm talking about. But Logan just, Paul I'm talking, hasn't. I'm talking about Jake Paul has a spectacle. Spectacle versus actual sport. Uh, entertainment versus you know actual exploitation. I'm just talking in general. I'm not, See, I'm not I, so much talking. I, I about would, the, I, you know, I, maybe that's what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm just uneasy with that. Where the where the value system for us as a culture is how many eyeballs can I get on me? And I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, there's money that way, but I I think at the end there's of the all day, the money in that. But yeah. I, but to your point, I think we're going down a dangerous road. Again, yeah. I support the misfits and what they're doing. There's a lane for sure. it. My issue is when it gets more views than a Canelo Charlo fight, uh, uh, Usyk uh, Fury fight. Yeah, that's a problem because this young audience is watching that, going, "I guess this is fighting." No, no, no. Usyk Fury's legit yeah. fight. These guys dedicate their entire lives to the sport, yeah. and they've gone through so much shit to get here. Yes, what they're doing. Yes, it is a form of fighting, but it's not the same. So that, that's where it gets a little right. And as long as you hold that and you understand that, that it's not the same and that there is a difference between 
sport on a very high level and what it takes in the lifetime of dedication and stuff. But it I doesn't that mean that D Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis aren't disciplined in their own way and aren't athletic in their own way and didn't do some shit. Like I've, I've said repeatedly, I do respect what Jake Paul's done. It's really hard to do what he's done. Like he puts himself out there. He spars all the time to get that. That's very difficult. It's very uncomfortable. You take brain damage you take shots but, but, yeah, and, and the same with logan paul but we're saying that because they have yeah. money already now yeah. what they're doing is no different than the kid who's 4-0 in sure. cuba right. who's sleeping on the dirt right and is getting no money. they don't have to do this but they know and that's yeah. why it's him that's why it's like okay kudos them yes. but don't get twisted they're not reinventing the wheel there's people that make seven dollars a day sparring more than they are more mm -hmm. disciplined than they are yeah they decide to have the, they have this massive fan base decide to go into boxing but they are playing it safe so you, you got to be careful with that. There's a lane for it, but yeah, something about it doesn't sit right with me. I don't know what it is. That's what I mean. Like, you, well, yeah. And I think maybe part of it is they know and you know and everyone knows. I, I don't think they would disagree with this, that there is something about when you, when you put all your attention into eyeballs. So it was like the Paris Hilton phenomenon. Paris Hilton was this, this and to an extent, the Kardashians. There was this new phenomenon with social media where the number of lenses on you was all you needed. And mm -hmm. it didn't almost matter what it took to be that. So all press is good press, right? You know, and that started with even Harry Houdini said, I, I don't care what you write about me, just spell my name right. Yeah. You know? So you understand that to a degree. You've always understood that. You know, anybody who's media savvy understands that. But there is, there, there should be a standard and a criteria in many ways, just for all of us as a culture and as a people to understand that you can make a lot of money and you can do certain things to get all the eyeballs on you. And you can throw a lot of other people under the bus and be cruel and vulgar and all those things to do that. Yep. Just know that that isn't a value system. That is not the ultimate value system. There is something about that, that you are compromising your own soul and your own self for that. I think that's what we all know inherently. Maybe that's the- I don't think Logan and Dylan are doing that. I'm not that. saying You're Logan. You're just saying in life. I'm saying in general, I think- But I think, I, I think we gotta make sure we separate that, that B, because yeah. would, because what Logan and them is doing, it's good in, in their lane. I know, but I have to but say, it's, it's all separate. due respect to Dylan Dennis, all due respect, I don't approve and I don't like that he's calling Logan Paul's fiance a whore. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't and like I that don't either. Think, I just think it, 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 it demeans Dylan and, and he doesn't need to do that. I don't understand it to have all those images on his phone and to be putting them out there. I, that's but, just where but, I draw the line. And I said, remember Conor but McGregor. Remember when he was Dylan, going after, uh, but remember, Dylan didn't start this Misfits League. Dylan is a yeah. participant. Yes. Logan and Jake and them. They're very good at it. So you can't live by the sword, die by the sword. You can't lump them in with Dylan. Right. Dylan's a one off in this. Mm -hmm. This continues without Dylan. Yeah. What Logan Jake built in this lane is what's impressive. There's this Dylan's whole, a one off. So you yeah, can't lump him There's this whole and Logan YouTube movement. Dylan. Where these, like this kid comes up to women and goes, do you want to die to see the reaction? This other guy who got shot because he would come in and like start harassing people and scaring them and he's a big guy. There's this weird, there's this weird trolling thing that people do on YouTube, these kids that are making a lot of money. That, that's how that kid got shot, you know. He, there's he, no uh, longevity in it though because at the end yeah. of the day, there's, there's no talent. It's just like this shock factor Yes, yes, thing. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that's... I think we agree. I think that's what we're saying. Yeah, I, I'm not. Hey. I'm not lumping L Logan and Jake into that or KSI or Tommy. Yeah, that Dylan was that one off there. Yeah. So you got to be careful. We don't say, well, they're all doing this. No. no, no, no. Yeah. They built that Misfits platform, and it's that's their lane, and yeah. it's good, and they can do that. But you should know what you're dealing with. Like when Logan won and called out, you know, uh, what's the fuck, Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio, the WWE guy. You're like, there you go. There you go. That's not real fighting. Yeah. And I think I think overall, Check, I think please. Logan Logan's a good example of a of somebody who follows their dreams. He's disciplined. He looks unbelievable. He puts himself in all these different. He's an amazing WWE uh, wrestler. I mean, just so entertaining. And he has grown. Like that kid started out w w as that YouTube phenomenon. He's just steps any lane that kid steps into. He's he's proof you can do anything you want. Yeah, I'm not the biggest yeah. guy in the world. Not the fastest. Not that you know you can do anything you want. Special. Yeah, special. It was yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, we got uh, Chemayev Usman coming up. We're doing the fight campaign, Thoughts Mr. On Joe that? Rogan, on uh, uh, Hamzat and Usman. Yeah, I mean, if if you had to right now put, I'm gonna, you're gonna put uh, your money on your smart money down. 
where do you go? Let's look at this. You're not you're not better on anybody who's taking a fight on ten day notice. You're not right. No, you're taking Hamza. You're taking uh, Makachev. Well, let's go. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, Kamar Usman moving up in weight, and if you look at the guys that move up in weight, especially fighting at a top level, they're like two and forty. Like the odds are completely. Is that right? Them. Yeah, it's awful. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, so, so Volk is, even uh, Us Usman at one seventy versus Hamza, it's a tough fight. Mm -hmm. At middleweight, even tougher. On a ten days notice, bad knees, he can be forced to strike. He doesn't kick. Yeah. This, for good chance strike he because the, his wrestling is no good here. They're going to no, he might wrestle, but also his knees are bad. Yeah. So if he had issues with Leon Edwards, take him down. It's be tough to take down Hamza. So you're forced forced to strike. You know he's not the most technical striker in the world. It's gotten better, but um, you know he doesn't use his kicks or anything like that. It could get dicey for him mm -hmm. on the feet. And then with uh, Makachev and Volkanovski, if this fight was twelve weeks and Volkanovski had a chance to prepare. For, Prepare for it. I'm putting my money on Volkanovski. I think he beat him the first time. He, he, really? Yeah, but on 10 day notice, and, and Alexander Volkanovski's biggest superpower is his cardio. And he's always training. So let's say his cardio is at a nine. Yeah. But when his cardio is at a 10, he's still. I would say his other superpower is his ability to not take damage at all. Like when you saw that, that, that video of him, there's a video going around after the fight, him walking. And he doesn't have a mark on his face, and he's so pissed he lost it. And he just is. But remember, Makachev's not a striker. So I, where, I where, where would he take the damage? He's a grappling. I, yeah, match. yeah, I understand. But he's, in general, doesn't take, doesn't take damage. And so, um, you know, this will be interesting. But you're, you're going, you're going, I'm very curious about this fight because I want to see if what Makachev does differently. Because the first time he fought him, whatever he was doing did not work to beat him. So what did well, he, he do? Won. Yes, but what did he do in his camp? What what different measures did he take to do? What are we going to see different? I think he's going to grapple more. You do? Yeah. Yeah. And plus, he's had twelve weeks to prepare for it. You know, Charles Oliveira. So you saying, don't think he'll strike? You think he's going to he's going to go? No, you think Islam's going to be like? You know, I'm a striker now. But he can strike. He's he's a striker. He's still a striker. He, Wait, you know? Yeah. Not really. He's no. a he's pure grap. I mean, grappling's his he's same as Khabib. He's a better striker than Khabib, but right. you would not label him as a striker. No. I, I, I think he's going to, knowing uh, Volkanovski's taking on a 10-day notice, it's going to be a lot of takedowns wearing his ass out. Mm. Get him down, wear him out. Because his cardio may not be what it was. But still, Volkanovski's a professional, so even his cardio is still better than 99% yeah. of the lightweight division. But that's his superpower, so it's, he's not the outlier anymore. Yep. So if his if he went to a decision which he lost and his cardio was a ten, you give him ten days notice. That cardio is a nine. I'm leaning towards Islam, man. Yeah. If you take away his biggest yeah. asset in yeah. all sports, his cardio, you even bring it down a notch, still better than ninety nine percent. It's not better than Makachev. True. Now I'm now who do I want to win? Volkanovski all day. He's one of my favorite fighters. If this was a twelve week camp, I'm taking Volkanovski. You're taking him. Ten days, tough. Um. I think this light heavyweight fight is very interesting to me. Magomed and John Walker? Ive is, yeah. Yeah. Uncle Ive is a monster. And uh, who, who, I'm, I'm going with uh, Magomed on that one. I think everybody is, yeah. yeah. You just got to, Johnny Walker pull off like a flying knee or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But, but Johnny's been winning fights he shouldn't be winning, so we'll see. It's a great, great fight. But the winner of Kamar Usman Hamza gets the next middleweight title. Oh, Ikram Aliskarov is fighting? <laughs> that's a really good fight though <laughs> against Warley Alves yeah one Warley, of the ultimate fighter Warley, yeah. Warley no that's a good from, fight no, don't sure. clown them yeah that's a great I'm fight sure but I don't know then them. Sedin Nagamurdov's a monster the main card's stacked mm -hmm. yeah names are tough to pronounce but Said, the main card's Said. stacked Nagamurdov yeah Syed's a monster he's one of my favorites mm. yeah we're doing the fight with Mr. Joe Rogan in Austin, Texas we'll yeah. probably have to leave on Friday Maybe how much it's an early is, card. It is, huh? I think it starts at eleven or twelve, and they're two hours ahead. Yeah, we have to come in on Friday night. Okay, this news to me. <laughs> I think How's I it news to you. What's hilarious? Have known eight, this forever. I know what it is. I had a. You date know what's funny? What's the last time we did companion? Two months ago, I had a date in Boise and I had to cancel it. So that's that's what it is. Okay. It says Rogan wants us there by noon, so you can't. The two hours ahead, so you'd have to. Oh, even if you left that at seven a.m. early, yeah, yeah, we got to leave Friday night. Yeah. The good thing is you could leave <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> Friday. You could leave Saturday night back to LA. Saturday morning, you mean? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll come. Yeah, I will. Hey, I will. Yeah. 
All right, Jim, what do you got for us? Because we got Adrian Peterson coming in. We don't want to go too long. All right, cool. Let's start with uh, Sanaz's current events here. Which one are we going with? Oh, this okay. I don't know what's going on lately with kangaroos, but they are just picking fights. So this guy, who's apparently also an MMA and jiu-jitsu instructor, Ooh. saw his dog getting taken by this kangaroo and decided not today. Wow. The kangaroo just grabs his dog? Yeah, just grabbed his dog, took him into like a pond or whatever. Really? Let's see. Well, that's really strange. Hey, when are you guys going to figure out kangaroos suck? Oh, damn, they attacked yeah. the guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tax the guy, guy drops the phone. Play from the beginning, Chin. Yeah. Damn, look at he's <laughs> all. <laughs> very, they always very, look like very that. Nate Diaz. He's all. Yeah, that's very Nate Diaz. It he's looks all, like he's doing dog, buddy. Though, huh? Okay, my dog. Take note of my oh. dog. Just grabbed his dog. And did the that guy get looks, messed up too? That water looks real he crocodile. He did get punched. He that, did get punched. That water looks very crocodile -y. Like, <laughs> seriously, get the fuck out of there. That, that, that's Australia, dude. I'm already nervous. But why is the kangaroo just chilling in the water yeah, like this? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. And they're laughing, too. Yeah, but that, that's, does that not look like crocodile? <laughs> that's Australia's in a nutshell. They're laughing. That's what Brandon would look like if he was a kangaroo. Just, just. Yeah, I'm pretty muscular, too, so not. <laughs> no, you look like a praying mantis, right? Mm -hmm. What else you got? Um, so this sucks. I, when are we going to figure out kangaroos mm -hmm. suck, dude? Kangaroos are assholes. Figure it out. By the way, but we went to Australia. They were because they were sedated. Jim, they were on night. <laughs> I know. They were sedated. They were so nice. <laughs> they were so calm. Remember, I laid down next to him and pet him. And yeah. I was like, yeah. is he just chilling in the sun? They're like, something like that. <laughs> they like sedated him. So yeah. he's just like. <laughs> they, they're, they're being fed the entire time. So they're so full. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they were cool <laughs> with us. This sucks. Yeah. Uh, we oh, talked about Suzanne so. Summers recently, right? Yeah. She had a Brandon long... used to like. I used to jack yeah, off to her uh, uh, thigh yeah. master yeah. videos as a young man. Did so you? she died at 76, which is like, that's still young. Young, yeah, it is. Young. But yeah, that's man. after a cancer yeah, battle. She had a 23-year battle with a, uh, an aggressive Dude, she's the cancer. original dime. Like, dude, yeah, when, she she was young, when she, she was, was young, she was so pretty. Yeah, she's... Her man got a face like me, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> what? It looks, like your dad. It looks like your dad. Yeah, it looks like she's me still about stunning. 30 years. Still a babe. Yeah. What? So was was uh, tough man can't can't well, yeah, nobody gets up. out of this alive Great all right line. so here's her dear diary don't say stupid things <laughs> dear diary uh, bring her up over there her, her body was Hold stupid on. go back right go back there no no finn chin go down go down go no down. it's black and right. white yeah no black keep and going white. keep right going there, right down. Down. let me just when, see when, that with the big it, yeah, right? the, by the no, way, but, guys, you guys, you have pointers, right? You guys, po you guys oh, have yeah. pointers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. right here. Oh, oh, here's my fucking right there, bring that one up. No, yeah, yeah, fuck that, that one. one. Right there. Oh, there is that go. her? Right? Look at her. Okay, so there. that's for Brian, and this is for Brian. Not so much there, more here. But you know, yeah. not my type. Crushing really. it. Not your type. Right oh, there, she's right here. This looks good. Oh, no, no, Brian, this isn't your type. She doesn't have a giant cock. Yeah, right? Imagine me a straight man going, nah, not my type. Well, Bubba, I think she didn't have much of a behind, and that I need a a booty. But back in those days, uh, boobies right. or That's tits right. were She's like very pretty. Yeah. She had a great personality. <laughs> it was more she was like just like she was just had something to her. She was funny. Those thigh master videos sense just did it for me. That's her older. She looks. Still, why is she yeah, sitting like that? On. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Why is she sitting like that's, that? That's 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 fantastic. That's a fantastic. My 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 mom would say, "Don't." That's not very ladylike. Yeah. And I would say, "That's okay." What kind of mm -hmm. cancer did she have? Rare form of uh, an aggressive form of breast cancer. And you know what, Brent? Oh, Does shit. it matter? Yeah. Like I know cancers. Oh yeah, that'll get you. Right. I don't know. Right, Just right. move on, Jen. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Um, wait. I like this thing now. <laughs> I haven't actually seen this one. I don't want to do this one. Oh, I watched SNL oh, did, this week. Okay. Yeah. So go for it. So Pete Davidson uh, came back. SNL was back this week. The writer's strike is over. And, you know, he starts the show by saying, we know what's going on in Israel. I'm all aware of terrorist attacks. My dad died in 9-11. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do what I know best. And that's to make it funny. I'll be honest with you. The show wasn't that great. Well, Saturday Night Live hasn't been good in years. So I don't think it's on Pete Davidson. But are people mad that he had that take on it or no? I think people like this. No, you got to make, I mean, they if, if they take well. your humor away, 
If they take the, our humor away, then they we have won't. nothing. So yeah. Well, no, no one's taking any humor away. I'm just saying, did the people like this? Yeah, open no, monologue? it was received pretty well. It should um, be. Yeah, his dad died in 9/11 for God's sake. Right. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, I like <laughs> Pete Davidson. He even alluded to how they call him butthole eyes and stuff like that. I love that he plays into that. Me too. Butthole eyes. He's like sickly hot, you know. Like he might be sick, but we don't know. Yeah, he always has something wrong yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sickly hot. laughs> Yeah, <laughs> girls like him. Oh right. my uh, god! I mean, there's a bunch of this. You can like. I feel like this, I'm just right? taking yeah. all the mic today. Go guys. for it! Yeah, go okay. for it. Okay, so Jada Pinkett Smith, she's got a memoir coming out, in which she's now revealing her and Will have been separated for seven years, and she was quote shocked that Will referred to her as his wife after the whole Oscar slap thing. I, I just are, are I can't I can't right with now? her man. Are yeah. you kidding? Hey, is she? When you talk about eyeballs and like just doing things for views, there you go. She is the worst. She is the worst. She's a thirst trap. Like she's the she's what everyone warned you about when you're coming up in the business. Like, dude, be careful. You just choose to sleep with because it can come back and bite you. She is the prototypical <sighs> worst person. Well, she's just just she'll awful. Do anything for attention. Well, you the gotta feel bad for Will, shot, right? The, What's that? You LLP gotta feel bad for Will. Will post a video of him laying down, sleeping, being like, "Turn him phone off." I mean, she also came out and said that you know she dated Tupac Shakur. She actually said Tupac was her soulmate and is her soulmate. She also came out to sell her book saying she used to sell crack. Oh God! And no one's buying it. We're like, she's, you don't have to lie so to sell full books. Of shit in general, like I, she's I, a bad person, it. man. But also, she and Will Smith have been separated for seven That's years. That's what she's claiming. And uh, but but they were at the Oscars together. Yeah. So she puts up appearances. Is that what it is? Do they live together in the same house? Yes. Yeah. I see. And they're on that show, the Red uh -huh. Table red Talk, table. all right. that shit. But they've been separated. Interesting. But the, 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 but here's where I think it's good. This is going to work out for Will. All the hate's going towards her, and people are like, "Oh, now I get Will." Yeah. Oh no, shit! 100%. He had to deal with this all his life. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> what? Can you, do you mind? I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I got Will's defense. Yeah. But, Just bleep it out, Chin. Yeah, we will. Yeah, but you, you have to deal with this. Like, no wonder he's slapping people. Yeah. This poor guy, man. She's, uh, you know, kids are all weird. Jeez, wonder why. <laughs> Well, she's just your mom won't she's shut up. Such a narcissist. Your mom won't pipe down about sucking off Tupac she's, every Monday. She's just a narcissist. <laughs> she's such a narcissist. You can just see it. Everything about her. But ima imagine if your girl every if she, imagine she had a following and just kept talking about her ex all the time. You're like, hey, bitch, can you not do that all the time? Can you show me a little respect? Well, my thing would be also. Um, you you kind of pick up on a narcissist after a while. You're like, yeah. man, you are all about yourself. You just go with the wind, don't you? Like, how much attention do you need? And I'm sorry, but her husband is so much more famous, the so much more Prince talented. Belair? He's so much more talented. He's so much more charismatic. He was a lad. And she can't stand it. She can't was stand it. Because of genie. Jada Pinkett Smith. No, I'm the saying he was in a lad. Yeah. yeah. The reason we talk about Jada Pinkett Smith is because of Will Smith. You're welcome for Will Smith. Now, I have to say, personally... The only reason we know about her is because of Will yes, Smith. Yes, but I will say that physically, I find her impossibly attractive. Like, I just... <laughs> Physically, I think she's very hot. I think and what I she's have. doing makes her not like. I used no, to find I agree her with you. But what she's doing, like, oh, I'm out. Now, now I look I'm at her out. as like evil. I go, mm -hmm. oh, I don't. But, but I mean, hey, Rich, do you realize Will Smith was in Shark Tale? He's, okay, he's he's <laughs> a giant in Hollywood giant, and she's yeah. What's the last she thing she was in though? Head. What's the last thing she was in? Menace to Society. There was, there was the yeah, one thing yeah. she did. She was great in this society. That's a great movie. But what's the last big thing she's done? She's, um, let's see. Besides right off Will's coattails. Yeah. Should I say <clears throat> shark tails? <laughs> I, yeah. him, I love some. that movie. He's got a lot of banger movies. Oh, Will Smith. Yeah. The top he's, top he's 10. Pursuit of Happiness. He's as big a movie star. I mean, of all his yeah. movies, Who's but yeah, bombing? sure. As big a movie star as you get. Queen Cleopatra. Mm -hmm. What's the big yeah, movie she go. was in? Not a lot. Nothing. Previous. Let's look. Not a lot. Just good at staying. Good at real good at staying um, relevant in any way she can. Red Table Talk. Okay. That's her show. Annie. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Secret Life of Bees. Oh, she was in Karate Kid. Well, because her son was in it and Will directed. Well, uh, what what else? How, what else she been in that? The Equalizer? Nothing Nothing nearly in the area code that Will Smith. No, Will Smith is... Ma the Matrix, am, that's, 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 that's a big legend. one. Oh, yeah. Matrix, yeah. 
is she is she getting those calls to be in all these movies if Only she's not married, she's to, married to Will Smith? To, no. Yeah, right. Men in I, Black, I, Will Smith. Oh, oh, she was a party guest she's in that. Some stuff. <laughs> yeah, some but I'm saying <laughs> so. She definitely got the. She hasn't done much though. Cool so the Will coattail Smith. thing is checking out. Yeah, yeah. She stayed relevant. She's by, all she, up on she them married, shark tails. She stayed relevant by knowing who to be married to. Make no mistake. It seems to me she's now she all throws him under the bus. She's all about herself. Now she's throwing him under the bus. That's where that's what drives me nuts. And then she's trying to act like she had this tough upbringing selling cracks. Like, no, who are you up, lying to? Did Ali. She say, did she say he was gay? Is that what, what she was saying? No, she no, 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 no. Out? So okay. people were asking if it was true, if the rumors were true that he was gay or they're both gay and they have an open relationship. She said all that's false, but yeah, I'm not buying any of it. <laughs> I, but I think this is good for Will Smith. I think most people are like, I feel bad for Will, man. This lady sucks. Yeah, and dude. Then he slowly comes back to Hollywood, insert Will, kick her out of the club. Well, look, and look what happened, right? Like you said, like he's a legend. The Oscar thing happens. He's banned from the Oscars for 10 years. And he did that for her. And now... She throws him under the bus. Yeah. And now we all feel bad for him. She's like, we were in together. And Will's like, what? I didn't know that. <laughs> that was such a yeah, dumbass man. move, though. The, the slap was so lame. It was so fake. It was like, well, oh, that whatever. slap was... It was lame. My, my, my opinion of that is... What happens when you get really famous is you can't help but to say, I think I'm one of God's favorites. And then if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you, you find out you're one say, of Satan's favorites. You might say, I might be I Gay. might be God himself. <laughs> I might be gay. And I can do things that no one else can oh, ever do. Oh, you got real serious go on slap us, huh? yeah, That's true. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. But that's true. Hell yeah. So that that arrogance, that hubris. When and and apparently, I heard his career went downhill once he bought a Tesla. Well, no, no. Apparently, our boy Denzel Washington said that great line. He said, "The devil the comes devil for you at in your, your highest, highest moments." Yeah, yeah. And I went like this. I read down a Hallmark card, Mister Washington. Well, it's it's true though. Yeah, but that wasn't. I guess he won the Oscar at the high moment. Any, anyone an Oscar? Yeah. yeah. Do After you that. think she like whispered in his ear in that moment and was like, "You better fucking do something." I don't think so. You, he I just think did that they, on his own? They, the word is she looked at him like, really? And he was like, oh, fuck, I better do something. Maybe I'll win her back. I didn't see that, though. Did, she said she didn't see the slap. Is that what I just saw? She said that, yeah, which is so stupid. Everyone saw that. Yeah. She was sitting in the front what row. What are you talking about, Jim? Yeah. And that's the same article where she said she doesn't. She says all the rumors about them being gay, open relationship is false. So Who knows? It, clearly, clearly she's full of shit. Yes. Poor Will Smith. Yeah, dude. I he think it's like good, good for dude. Will, though. And we care about Will here, so we want Will to come back. Mm -hmm. But look, set it off. That was a good. <laughs> that was a good movie. That yeah, she was, was in 1992. But I'm good saying movie. that was a good movie. That she Eddie was Professor, in. another good one. She yeah, was that was too. Yeah, that one too. That was Eddie Murphy. Yep. She was killed in Scream too. She was early oh, she on. Was? Yeah, in the movie theater. Stuff. She's done some stuff. Not recently, but yeah. Yeah, back in the day though, she was. Oh, the Inkwell. Okay, move on. <laughs> She'll do whatever she has to to stay right. Menace to Society. I already said that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One Jump Street, greatest show of all time. Doogie Howser? She's a lot of there. stuff. Gosh. No, we'll keep going. All right, what else? You um, all right, let's see. Wait, we had another one from Sanaz, right? Is I don't think it? so. Okay, never mind. Huh. Oh, well, kind of. Which one? Um, the, I lost it. Oh, the Jimmy Allen one. Oh, the Jimmy Allen art. Let me look for Jimmy it. Jimmy Allen. Oh, the black guy? The singer? Yeah. yeah. The, country singer? Country the country artist. singer. So I got a question for you, B. When you go to your kids' baseball games, do you carry a knife? Because Jimmy Allen does. That means he can't fight. <laughs> He's at his kids' football game, wielding a knife, and like openly exposing it to everyone who's there. Well, it's like on his hip pocket. Yeah, can we pull up the picture? He got in trouble recently, right, with his assistant or something like that. He was like trying to force her to suck his wiener. What? what the yeah. Who is this? Wow, nobody is, knows this stuff, huh? I don't know who Jimmy Allen. Jimmy Allen's a big country music artist. He was on American Idol recently as, okay. a, as like a guest uh, performer oh, on I there. Got you. And, and but he he, got, he used, that's a large, used to that's be a massive. That's a machete. I mean, it looks pretty big, but. Yeah. He might old. be going through some stuff because I, I know he got a divorce from his wife. They have like three little kids, so he might be going through some stuff. I definitely don't show up uh, to any games with a large knife. Sheath knife. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. He's got a lot going on right now. I know he's counter suing his like former manager. Yeah, he's, he's got got a lot of issues, allegations yeah. and stuff going on. But I mean, maybe he's getting like like threats, so maybe he feels like he has to carry a knife. I doubt it's for the other dads on the team. Yeah, everyone said that he had a really pleasant attitude and great conversations at the game, though. So it's weird. Always like, "Hey, man, can you drop the machete though next time?" <laughs> what 
Well, he's like, I brought to slice the oranges at halftime. Like, that makes sense. <laughs> Well, he's just going through some stuff. A hard time. He's yeah. counter suing a woman for alleging he had sexual assault. Yeah, he had some issues with that stuff. I don't know. What else you got, Jen? Well, I mean, this is kind of like bad timing, but Colin no- <laughs> Colion Noir posted this. He tagged you in it with his uh, TRX. This truck is a murderer. Yes. <laughs> oh, look at that. Right there in the A. <laughs> yeah. Thing is a serial killer. Kind of. Now, if there are pieces of deer on it or something, I'd be like, right. yeah. So, <laughs> but because it's such a massive truck, like when I was driving to Sacramento, I think just the path we took, there was mosquitoes everywhere. Probably killed a uh, ten thousand mosquitoes. Just yeah. you know, just when you're driving. Lord's work right there. Mm. Oh, mosquitoes are the fucking worst, dude. They're popping right now too, man. My ankles all tore up. Oh, yeah, my kid. I, I don't get bit. My kid gets bit. My Some baby, people don't get bit. Baby, it's like a blood looks type. Like he's got pock marks everywhere. It's just like boom, 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 boom. They love him. They don't bite me. Yeah. It, so people have certain like things. I, I guess they're sweat or whatever. Yeah. Jay doesn't get bit either, but I, I get, get bit so up. much. Me I too. literally don't get bit. My mother would come in, wake me up, and they would swarm on her. They just would yeah. It's, it's weird. She get bit by fifty mosquitoes. Yeah. There's some they don't they get. Yeah, I don't know. It's a smell or something, yeah. I don't know what it's it is. My, exactly. It's my uh, Holy Ghost power. <laughs> what uh, this is an old one. I just thought this was funny. So I'll like, play it real quick. If it... Hold on. Computer's getting a little slow right now. Chuck Norris making Chuck Norris jokes. This is awesome. Hey, someone says, Chuck Norris has dropped twice when he has a baby. Once in Hiroshima and once in Nagasaki. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> when Chuck Norris turned 18, his parents moved out. <laughs> Chuck Norris learned to read from a book he wrote. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, it's not working. Give me a sec here. It's just him reading. Here it is. Hold on. And I, and I bent down and I petted him. So he's talking about Tiger. All of a sudden, you hear this. Like that. So the trainer says, get up very slowly and back up so the tiger did he slowly got up (laughs) (laughs) oh man (laughs) so the tiger did yeah that's funny that's good all right um is there anything else i think it's time to bring in adrian peterson all right cool let's bring in adrian peterson i think the uh, man the legend the myth is here it is adrian peterson hall of fame running back when the greatest ever do it beat me 50 to 3 okay Yeah, but he is live in studio and he's on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, Built like scoring touchdowns and winning your hearts on Dancing with the Stars. Yep, it's Adrian Peterson. Symmetry, the symmetry meter is about to hit one thousand. Adrian Peterson, what a special episode, Brian! What a special episode. Fourteen years in the NFL, which is unheard of. It's ridiculous to be a running back and now a dancer. Did a little pirouette for me, and <laughs> you're built. His technique was good. He's built. Like a dancer, I said it. I said he's built like a football player. Why? Well, because I, I, I've I've, I've yeah. been around some dancers. They don't look like that. Listen, man, admit it. You're you're 212 pounds. You played at 220. Svelte. You're in dancer shape. Mm-hmm. What, how how is how is it going? Because an athlete of your caliber can tell his body to do anything it wants. Yeah. How how are you doing as a dancer? Just so the fans know, because <laughs> Adrian's on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. So yeah. Mo- and most of the time. Guys that had, I mean, legends like Adrian, like himself, when they go on Dance with the Stars, do very well because the footwork. Yes. So go ahead. Yeah, I feel like I'm doing doing well. It was rough starting off. Um, you know, I had really been active like that, so a lot of muscles started, you know, started to kind of fire in in different places. I'm like, Man, is it harder than just, you expected? It, it is. It, it was that's why it's tiring, right? Yeah. Everyone says it, the, like the commitment, like the practices. Like, yes, because you got to keep your back yeah, straight. Like four and a half hours a day. Oh. Like it was it was brutal, you know, like just mentally, you know, because you have to be engaged and locked in. Yeah. And you know, listening so, to the music, right? Yeah, listening to the music and being um, in tune, you know, you got to be in tune with the music. And it's like no, really no room for error because once the music starts playing, if you take the wrong step, 
wrong move, it throws off the routine, you know. A lot of pressure. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when how'd this come about? When Dance with Stars called you, we were like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> it can't be that tough. So the funny thing is, they um, the first time they came around, I was with the Vikings. And um, I really was like, you know what? Uh, I don't really want to do it. You know, I was kind of nervous to kind of put myself out there like that. And then I was playing football. So I kind of had a little excuse, right? Yep. So um, this time when it came around, you know, I've been out for two years. I'm just like, man, you know, this is something that can be challenging for me. And, um, you know, I can kind of get outside of, you know, my element and try something different, you know. And so I, I, I accepted to do it. So you're enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, How's I'm been the transition it. playing that intensely for 14 years now? What, what's it like to not play at all? Like all of a sudden you don't have a regimen. Mm -hmm. You don't have that strict schedule. And now it's like, see you later. Go do your thing. And Is I would assume weird? it's tough for him because you're talking about one of the greatest to ever do it. Yeah. So it's not like you're just this guy who played like four or five years. And it's like, ah, oh, get into real estate. You're talking about a guy like that's 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 your thing. Heisman Trophy winner, rushed for 2,000 yards. Like, one of the greatest to ever do it. Yeah. And then it's just over. Yeah, yeah, it was rough. They robbed me for the Heisman. Yeah, agree. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I in my mind, I won it. Yeah. So <laughs> I give it to and, you. You know, Matt Liner, you can have it at your spot, but. I, and I think they robbed you because they gave it to your boy Jason White before, right? <laughs> so they didn't want two Oklahoma boys to win it. Yeah. Now, I, just real quick for answer. Well, I played against Adrian. I played for University of Colorado in the Big 12 Championship. Oh, you did? And we knew he was good. Like, I, you know, you, you hear about him, right? And I remember in warm-ups, and I was like, where's Adrian? And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then when he got the ball, I was like, oh, we're screwed. We lost 50-3. Yeah. to three. It's a different thing. We lost 50-3. 50 to three. 50 to three? <laughs> What? We lost 50-3, to three and he was just running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah that's a good Adrian Peterson. Well, he runs high. Like he, yeah, yeah, I know. He, that's his style. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, what are we going to do? My buddy, and we lost 50-3, to three yep. and it could have been 100-3, to three, but yep. they were cool. My I think buddy, you sat out. In the my buddy had to court. cover um, Randy Moss <laughs> once, and he goes, oh, that's why I'm never going to play in the NFL. And he was a D1. He played at Ball State, but he went, oh, this is a whole different thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Randy so, Moss. And why did you – like – the crazy thing is to play 14 years as a running back is I don't think, I don't know of any running back who played that long. Maybe if you go back to the 70s or the 80s, but for the most part, you know, it, nowadays especially, you, you play for five years, that's a long, that's a long time. Yeah. And 14 years, and with the NFL, obviously, I mean, the, the injury rate's 100%. How did you do it? What, what, is there, do you think you have a, a sort of a, I have this philosophy or this this theory. Uh -oh. mm. I have a theory oh, God. that guys like Peyton Manning, Brady, they have the ability at the last second, Drew Brees, to just they when they see the hit, they can kind of they do. I don't know. There's something. But there's, he can't do that. I Those know. are white quarterbacks. Yes. <laughs> what a stupid theory. Why do they make it a race theory? <laughs> no, because he's a fucking giant black running back <laughs> who gets hit every single it's play. 12, it's not giant. But but For running back, he's a giant. Well, player. no, he's <laughs> giant. It's, it's ridiculous that you were able to take that kind of pounding. Mm -hmm. What What is it? Um, God? <laughs> yeah. Genetics? Sure. Literally. Yeah. So, genetics? Genetics had a lot to do with it, um, but it's a mindset, too. Yeah, you know, um, for me, I, I always had the mindset that I wanted to be the hammer, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why I play so aggressive. And it's I, I tell people all the time. It's funny because the same thing that you see me do in college and in the NFL, I did it in little league. I did it in middle school. I did it in in high school. Huh. You know, but it was that same mentality: be the hammer, be the hammer. Because you know, as a running back, when you get the ball, you got guys. Everybody's coming. To attack you so yeah. you have to set the president say hey when guys are watching film uh, uh you know you got to make them question if they want to come low or if they want to you know make yeah. a business decision you have to you gotta you gotta make those guys think that type of way mm. so i think for me that was beneficial because guys knew when they played against me like dang you know this guy even when he gets hit and get caught from time to time, whenever it happened, he's coming back the next play and he's coming even harder. Yeah, and it hurts. You know, <laughs> so you, you're delivering the punishment yeah. instead of a lot of running backs accept it yeah. or they yeah. try to juke out of the way and then get hit. Right. Yep. But I, I think it's interesting too, and I, I don't know if there's going to be a running back who's going to be able to get to 
your level as far as the the rushing yards, the uh, how many how long you played? Because now the running back position, it's just changed. Yeah. Like you look at even like Saquon Barkley, who that to you know that to give franchise him, or you look at uh, Taylor at Indy who sat out. Now the NFL is kind of going away from the running back. These guys aren't getting valued like they, when you were playing. It was a big deal. Yeah. What do you mean by this? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little ignorant. The, the running back, because <clears throat> so like Saquon Barkley, who pe some people think he's the best running back in the league, he won a long term deal and guaranteed money. The owners are going, you're a running back. They yeah. get hurt. You know, they get hurt all the time. Mm -hmm. Or the NFLs, it's a pass league now. Yeah. So they're, they, they're, they, you have to be a guy like Christian McCaffrey or Kamara, you know, uh, with the New Orleans who can do it all. They have to be able to catch. And mm -hmm. so as far as like the, just the running back with a fullback, they're going away from those days. So I, I think you're like the last of a dying breed. Yeah, it's, it's, un, it's unfortunate, you know, how guys are the running back, you know, uh, or they're being treated. It's, it's ridiculous, you know. Um, but, you know, I think guys like Christian, guys like Barkley, you know, Alvin Kamari, um, you know, Derrick Henry. Yep. You know, I think he's like that right now. Kind of their last true like north and south pound guy. Henry for sure. Yeah. Henry's yeah. a guy who played similar to you. Yeah. Um, I think they'll keep it alive. Um, you know, the thing that bothers me the most is like you see the situations running backs are in and how they're being treated. As soon as playoff time come, <laughs> that's who you rely on. Correct. You, re you rely on the running back, you know. So I feel like once guys get to the point where they're they're willing to sacrifice, you know what, I'll sit out. You know, I'll set out a year, and when and then when multiple guys do that, agree. Then you know, I think they'll put, it'll be a new president. You know, like people, they, these organizations start respecting that position more when they see that. You know what? Mm, we can't. You know, every team don't got a a, a, a Debo. You yep. know, mm -hmm. where you can move a guy from yeah, receiver man. to play. You know, play the running back position to kind of make up when you know a guy is hurt or you need you know another guy back there. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, um, I think a good group of running backs came out this year. Big time. You know, so the guy from, um, from Texas. Robinson, oh, my God. He's so talented. I was watching some highlights Nuts. the other day. His like, cuts? I said, okay. Insane. I, he, he, he's on my, he got me on his radar right yep. now. You know, I'm like, I'm going I'm to watch this kid play because yep. he. That's saying a lot because he's a Texas kid. Yeah, you know, and I really didn't get to watch him. You know, I heard a lot about him being in Texas. Didn't yep. really get to watch him that much, but in college. But my uncle who lives down there in Austin who played for Texas, you know, he was telling me about him too. So I ended up catching a game and I'm just like, okay, this kid right here, you're talking about he plays physical, you know, he's quick. That jump cut is His ridiculous. Hands, yep. You know, got really good hands, yep. like good all around back. Mm. So um, I feel like you know guys like that will make the owners put some respect. But know, to think how back. good he was, and then even it's like with the teams, like he was drafted what like running backs now, like no one's going to yeah. the top ten. Like I think he went what fifteen to twenty Just something. It's a passing league, passing, but then also they get injured a mm. lot, and then they're not getting paid. Like let's say my son was gifted at football, which he is. The running backs aren't getting the same money as a receiver or a tackle or a wow. quarterback yeah. or a DB or a linebacker like a rush end. Mm. They're just not getting the same money because yeah. the NFL, the owners, they're wrong. They go, we can just put anybody in there and get yards. Yeah, and they're so wrong. With your speed yeah. and, and your intelligence, did anybody try to make you a cornerback, make you a a, a wide receiver? I mean, because I feel like mm. you could have played those ro those positions easily and been just as yeah as effective. Yeah, no, I never got that opportunity. I tried in high school. Yeah, and, uh, and it didn't. My high school coach was like, uh, no, right. "No, sir, you're too <laughs> strong." <laughs> yeah, I'm like, coach, I can play defense they, too. They want to have very, the ball. Yeah, yeah I can play ball, defense and be productive on the defense side of the ball. He was like, Adrian, I know you can. I know you could do it, but we gonna don't keep you for the running back position. You know, so. Adrian yeah. could have played both. I, I, I honestly think he could have played defense as well. There's two plays in particular I remember. Uh, one was against the Steelers, and you rushed for a touchdown, but you literally just threw your shoulder into the guy and knocked him flat out like a linebacker. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you could do both. So I, I'm surprised you weren't pushed to do, actually. And yeah. I think the closest to him right now would be a Christian McCaffrey. And not size wise, but I mean, you guys play similar. Christian runs yeah. the hardest I've seen. Hundred percent. In the NFL now, like, so did AP. Yeah. yeah. Marshawn's retired, right? No, I know, but I'm saying Marshawn was was a. Oh well, you, kind of yeah. like, well, if you yeah, want to go back, guys retired. Go Jim Brown. That's a 
Jim Brown made made guys pay. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Brown made guys super pay. But currently, guys like Christian McCaffrey, no one runs harder than McCaffrey and Debo. Them boys, when they get the ball, you're like, look out, man. Yeah, they run really, really hard. The guy down in um in Vegas runs really hard too, Jacob. Oh yeah, Jacob's talented. Yeah, he runs. Another guy was one to get paid. Yeah. Was leading rusher in the NFL and they're just not paying him. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it sucks because it doesn't suck because it's really good that you get so many talented guys that come out that might not have, you know, the success in college that you would think, you know, like yep. a Reggie Bush or, you know, Marshawn Lynch or something like that. Um, and they kind of go on the radar or whatnot, and then they get to the NFL and get the opportunity, and, you know, they take their game to a totally different level. See, I, th- I think if re- the shame on Reggie Bush with his talent, like say he was in the San Francisco 49ers offense or New Orleans, yeah. he would have been all pro six years in a row. Yeah. But back then, they weren't using the running backs like they are now. Mm. Like Reggie could catch. He could, he could go into slot. He could do all that, but they, didn't, they weren't set up for that. So he is forced to run on third down. He's not a third down back. He's too small. So he, he didn't have a he had a decent career, but man, if he was like in his prime today with what the way they can maneuver him in a Shanahan offense, superstar. Yeah, but at the he, day he was just a guy like he had to run between the tackles. Yeah, and it was during your days too. So yeah, it's like that ain't happening. Yeah, he boy. had to run between the tackles a little more, but he got lucky because he was one of the few guys that was that ended up in New Orleans. Yep, you know with Sean Payton and Sean Payton. You know, like that's the style that he's always yep. looking for. You yep. know, the Alvin Kamari type guy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so he got kind of lucky being, you know, selected to go there. You know, and being be a part of that offense. Um, I think when he took that hit, you know, oh, yeah, the famous hit. hit yep. I think that kind of knocked some of the juice out of him. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He was like, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I've always thought, like, man, if Reggie had my mentality or Marshawn Lynch type mentality, yep. as far as like North and South. Mm. So Where did you get that oh mentality? That, did, do you think that was inherent, or is that from your upbringing? Like, yeah. that's a very. Upbringing. Do you think that, it's because you were the it biggest was? eight-year-old on the block? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So here's the funny. Here's the funniest thing, and um, I'm experiencing now, like with my son, like Adrian Junior. Like he's like he's ripped up, you know. Is he jacked? But he's but he's slim, you know. Like you see him out there, he's smaller than everyone, you know. Um, How old is he? He's uh t- eleven. Eleven. I have an eight, a eight year old too. He where he's he's really slim, slim too, but really muscular. But he's like when you see him, he stands. He's tall. Mm. I think he's gonna be like six three or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but like w- even when I was younger, I was I had the same frame. So I really wasn't like the biggest kid, you know. But I had the biggest heart, and I I was just wired different, you yeah. know. I was tough as nails. Um, but that that comes from my upbringing, you know. Like, so, you know, when when I was seven, I, I lived in Dallas. Me and my mom and my two of my cousins, my aunt, we lived in these apartments in Dallas. And I had an older brother who was eight, and he passed away there. And we ended up coming back oh, no. home to Palestine. But I never forget, my mom had went to work and we was staying with my uncle. My uncle was babysitting us. And we weren't supposed to be outside. And, of course, the coolest uncle, you know, yeah, you guys go outside and play. So I'm outside playing football, ironically. And my brother was riding a bike with his friends. And uh, he ended up getting hit by a car. Oh, my God. Got hit by a car. What a and, disaster. What a disaster. You know, like for me at that age, I remember uh, somebody running over and it was an Asian, you know, your brother got hit. So I just remember sprinting over there to him. And I remember his head was like three times the size of his normal, you know. Mm. And I remember getting on my knees and like raising his head up and like calling his name, calling his name. And he didn't respond, laid him back down. And I remember spraying over to my aunt's house and just banging on the door, banging on the door. And I was like, aunt, you know, Brian just got hit by a car. And she was on, I remember, never forget, like it was yesterday, she was on the phone, she dropped the phone. And she was like, you know, come in the house, lock the door. And then as I go into the house, I see the ambulance come, right? So um, get to the hospital later that day and, you know, he was pronounced brain, he was pronounced brain dead. So for me, hmm. like, like going through that and like seeing that happen and like it, that entire experience and then coming back to Palestine, you know, you know, maybe like a week or two later, have the funeral. I didn't cry at all. Was, my, all my tears were, were gone by that time. Right. And I remember we moved in with my grandmother and there was a, a plant room that she had all her plants in, but it, was, it had a bed. And then it was a door, and then this other room was my uncle's room, 
who he had, I think he was at, he went to the University of Texas at that point. But uh, that was his room, right? And my mom slept there. We stayed there for like a year. And every single night, I, I would hear my mom in her crying, you know? Every night. Every, every night. Mm-hmm. And I actually go in there and try to, you know, consult, hey, mom, it's going to be okay, or whatever, whatever. So I grew up fast, and that, that right there, like, it, the, end, the end of your it, innocence. Yeah, it, it hardened Maturity, me, right? Yeah. It hardened me <clears throat> at a young age. And for me, I always looked at it because my brother was way, he was way more talented than me. Mm. Like, way more talented than me. Such a shame. Smart. Like, he was just brilliant. And so, for me, anything that I did after that point, it was like, I'm not only am I doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for my brother, too. Because he cut it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, that always allowed me to, like, play aggressive and play with an edge. Hell yeah. And, you know, take out anger and frustration, mm. um, you know, that I know came from, you know, from dealing with that situation along with other situations as well. Like that, man. You know what I'm saying? And then, of course, when you grow up, you know, with eight cousins, you know, boys, and you had uh, you get six, six uncles, you know what I'm saying? And they all... That's just all testosterone. That's yeah. just all, boys. So people see my dad, my dad, like 6'4", 230, Damn. and they be like, wow, you see, we see where you get it from, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, I tell them all the time, I said, that's a fluke. You know, like my dad, like my dad genetics... Obviously, as well, helped me, you know, have the type of, you know, body style and the talent and ability that I had. But my mom's side, yeah, like that's where the, the goons are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like my mom was 11 3. She went to university. She was 11 3 in 100. I had a what? Un- yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's where the yeah. speed comes from. I had, a, I had an uncle. His name was Ivy Lee Brown. He played for Pine Bluff. He actually played for Arizona for, for about, about three, three or four years. But in high school, I broke all his records. Damn. He was he was six two, two thirty. He was like a four or five guy. He had a seven foot high jump. Jesus. In high school. Freaks. Yeah. Oh my God. My, 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 my oldest uncle, he was Papa Sailor Man. Like before he passed, even when I was in my prime playing football for the Minnesota Vikings, ripped up shredded. He was always more ripped up than me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. When he played, he um he was like a four three guy, like super strong. He used to pick up cars, like the back of cars, literally yeah. pick up cars and move them. Just a family of freaks, man. I had my uncle uh, Chris Mitt. He went to the University of Texas. He actually played around. He played the time with like Ricky and Apple White and all those oh, guys. Yeah. Studs. Shoot, he was 6'7", 270 pounds. Damn. Just ripped up. All on mom's just side. All on my mom's side. And then my aunt, my oldest aunt, she was way faster than my mom, <laughs> but she was too busy beating so you, people you up for from, school. You come from X-Men. You come <laughs> Pretty from much. X-Men. Yeah, man. <laughs> Pretty much. Your dad's right? Professor X. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I also do believe that there are a lot of really great athletes out there that don't play for 14 years. And yeah. a lot of that is also the idea that you you... You know, you. I think when you go through something that that horrendous, that catastrophe, mm-hmm. it's got to just gird you for anything, man. For anything, yeah. Like discomfort on that level. Yeah, yeah. It was rough, <clears throat> man. You know, you know. Who helped um, you navigate it? Who helped you derive meaning from it? Your football. mother. Um, football. Yeah, just Coaches. just this football, man. And you know, my mother, us just being there for for each other, um, whatnot. But a lot of prayer, you know, because mm. um, you know. I was, big in my faith as far as you know god never give you put more on you do you can handle you can bear you know what i'm saying so for me i always kind of found comfort in you know reading the scriptures and understanding that like the you know job and what he went through mm-hmm. and just book. like wow you know like to be able to do that you know and continue to press on and, and keep, keep faith. faith right exactly um, and did, you know, did your we mom know how you know special of, you were? You know the book of Job, Bob? I don't. Just the, the devil says to, to says to God, he says, your faithful servant, Job, I can turn him. Mm-hmm. I can take everything away from him, and then he'll turn away from you. The reason he loves you is because you've given him so much. Yep. And mm-hmm. God takes that bet. And he did did your mom know mm-hmm. how special you were at football? Like, was she always like, stick to football, make sure you get the grades? Like, you can mm-hmm. do things with this? Cause, because so, everyone's so athletic in your family, yeah. I'm sure like you weren't an outlier. But did your mom know that you had this special set of skills to be yeah. one of the top five running backs of all time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she that's she a, that's a, that's insane. <laughs> she's seen the ability, you know. Um, a lot of people don't know like track was my second or my second love. So at one point during my sophomore year, I was just like I was going to X football out and just in focus, high school. Yeah, and just focus on track because uh, me and the coach had you know we kind of butted heads or whatever. Um, but 
Um, she inspired you, me to stay with her. Dash? Huh? Was it? Was yeah, one hundred, two hundred. <clears throat> um, was pretty much pretty much my events. So, but uh, yeah, my mom was she was dialed into it. She was just like, hey, whatever you want to do, you know, I'm supporting you. So if that's track, if that's football, wherever it is, that's cool. I know you know if you put your mind to it and keep working like you've been working, then you can you know succeed in, in either one. And then was the family cool growing up in Texas that you went to you committed to Oklahoma? How'd that choice come <laughs> <Yeah>. out? <laughs> now my uncle didn't like it. You yeah, because yeah, he was you know Longhorn he was, alumni. Yeah, he's a Longhorn. He actually still lives in Austin. Um, he didn't like it, but you know he understood my logic behind it. You know at that what time. What was the logic? I, I mean, Oklahoma was big at the time too. Yeah. So for me, I I, I felt disrespected for one um, because. <sighs> from my <clears throat> my junior year on, I was the number one recruit in the country. You know, I had already taken my SAT and you know whatever and qualify and all that. And Texas was like the third school to offer me a scholarship, and I'm right there in your How backyard. Dare they? I've been a number one recruit in the country since my junior year. Yeah, you're you up know? the street. Yeah, you know. And then I had God did they Texas A and M, Oklahoma. <laughs> Offer me scholarships. Like, I, can you imagine the hey like, Longhorn? Hey, hey guys, like the, who was responsible? How did we fucking miss that guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The rival. Somebody got fired. <laughs> yeah, so it was so that rubbed me the wrong way, first off, and then you know once I went to go visit UT, like I loved it there. You know, like I'll never forget. Like even when my uncle was there, I remember standing out there a spring game they had right. And I'm waiting for him to get dressed and come out, and the stadium's empty. Like, I remember looking out at the stadium, just like, man, I'm going to be back here. Yeah, it's a special playing. place. Like, I was UT all the way, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, whenever the recruiting process came about, it just, you know, once I took a visit to Texas and then I took a visit to Oklahoma, I was like, man, this is pretty much the University of Texas in Oklahoma. Yeah. There's so many guys from Texas that, that, that they pull from Texas that go to Oklahoma, right? Most of the team, right? Yeah. yeah. And then the one thing that stood out the most to me, which is what I dedicate myself to, is you get out what you put in. So the grind was different, you I mean, know? Like, is that a, a Stoops thing? I, like the so, culture he created? Yeah, the culture he, he created with the staff that he brought in. This guy by the name was uh, Jerry Smith. We call him Smitty. And, uh, you know, the guys in the fraternity, we were just like, you know, guys are Smitty built, right? So it was just his regimen and the way these guys grind compared to what I seen in Texas. Because I never understood. I'm like, Case University of Texas, man. Like, we got, I feel like Texas is the best football. Yes. You get all the top recruits that go to University of Texas, and then you, you're pulling guys in from different states as well. Like, why come we're not up there? You know, why come it's not a dynasty like Alabama was? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you got all the talent. Yeah. So for me, during that time, it was like these guys not really putting their work in. They're just relying on talent. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And hard work out does talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that's what it was. Say that again. Hard, <laughs> hard work out does talent when talent doesn't work hard. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was with Oklahoma. You know, they had guys that weren't as talented. They had guys that were talented, too. But they had guys that weren't as talented. But those guys grinding. were grinding, you know. So when I got to Oklahoma, it was the same thing. Like, it was that grind, and that's what I love. Yeah, who's who's going to develop me the best to to get to the so ultimate you, you, goal? you like the grind. You embrace the grind. It oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Well, did that happen? Did did you have a coach in high school that did that to you? Is that what it was? You were just used to it? Yeah, I was just used to it, but that was my mentality, too. Like, for me, it was like, okay, I understood at a young age, like, I always wanted to play in the NFL. It was never college. I had overlooked all that. I was like, I'm going to play in the NFL one day, right? But for me, I knew at a young age that I was more talented than the kids around me. You know, I was faster. I was stronger. Um, you got that right away. How old were you when that happened? Eight, seven, eight. Okay. Like I, you know, yeah. and um, so I knew those things, right? And then I'm sitting, on, I'm seeing my uncles, and I'm hearing stories about them and all this. So I knew that I was either cut from a different cloth, you know what I'm saying? Like from a different breed, right? This is your destiny. And I always knew. I said, you know what? Not only am I the, you know, the most talented, but if I work the hardest, they can't keep up. They can't keep up. I, I, it's, it's, a, it's, it can be a blessing and a curse because if you realize you're more talented than everybody. Then you're like, I can kind of coast, not work as hard. Yeah. But then when you get a guy who has all the talent, he's more talented than everybody, but then outworks them, they're screwed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they can do. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. They're never going to catch up. Yeah, that's scary. And that's, why that's I, Oklahoma. That's yeah. why I try to instill into people and my kids today. I'm just like, man, you guys are really blessed and talented. Same. But you have to put the work in. Yeah, man. you got to put the work in. I've seen guys that had, that had the same amount of talent that I had, 
but didn't put the work in. Yeah, they, you go, know? they go by the wayside. And they just kind of... Do you commit- watch other sports? Are you a fan of uh, anything like UFC or, or any of that? Um, I, I watch <laughs> basketball from time to time. I'm a, I'm a fan of those, like UFC and boxing and stuff like that too, but I'm not going to lie and say that right. you know, I'm sitting there watching... You still watch, you watch a lot of NFL or college? Yeah. Like, did yeah. you watch... I mean, off your Sooners beat... Uh, the Longhorns, the, the yeah, shoot, shootout. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't get to watch it like I wanted to because I was actually rehearsing it, at, at, doing rehearsals. I was dancing. Yeah. I was, I know, I'm right? sorry, fellas, Miss Game. I was <laughs> dancing. What, 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 <laughs> how, many dances, how many dances do they have you doing now? So right now we're on the the fourth dance. Fourth dance. The fourth dance. I'm doing the uh, Vietnamese waltz. The Vietnamese, oh, the Viennese waltz. Viennese waltz. And, who, and who's your partner? Who her, name, her name is Britt Stewart. Yeah, so everybody's pretty pumped up because this week is... Uh, the hunt, uh, the hundred anniversary uh-huh. of Disney. So um, it's like the hundred, the Disney. So it's all Disney night. theme. Yeah, well, I love when they do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I so, really do. So tomorrow is, is turning up. It's a uh, hundred Disney's night, Disney and, night, and uh, we'll be dancing to some of your your favorite Disney movies, man, and some of your favorite soundtracks. And who who, who else is on the show with you? As far um, as that. You got um, any other athletes? <clears throat> no other athletes. No, no. The NFL guys um, always do well. Jason Mraz. I'm oh, saying yeah. his name right. Yeah, yeah. Jason Mraz. Yeah. Yep. He's he's on there. Um, Look at that. Look at that reach. Bro. You got that. <laughs> I mean, I like the lines. You know, I like the lines. <laughs> the lines. I'm telling you. <laughs> I got to have more. You know, I got to have those fingers together. Like, you got <laughs> that <laughs> right there, man. That, the was, wrist is pointed <laughs> perfectly. Yeah. You're a natural. That's what I was doing at my rehearsals. I was just like, and looking at back at my phone, like, okay. Now you do that same well, cel- hey. you do that same kind of wrist movement in the NFL. They think there's some sugar in your tank. You want a touchdown? Right. Hey, I know, right? yeah. it's very anti football. Things have I'm changed. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that's called graceful. But you get along with everyone, the whole, the whole staff, the other contestants, yeah. and everything. Oh yeah, it's all good. It's all love, man. We all want to see each other perform well. There's and, no dancer beef. Good. You don't know. Injuries, right? I mean, I feel like you're no, I'm good, crazy. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's crazy, bro. No, bad knee, your knees are good, everything. Knees Hip. are good, so man. S- yeah. That's nuts. I got I roll up the bed, I feel amazing, you Damn. know. So, when you know, when I was with Seattle, I played that one game and um, I ended up having a ended up with a pinched nerve. Yeah, it kind of de- developed later that in your neck, or where was it no, at? It was like my, my lower back. Oh, nothing, damn, nothing worse, right? Listen, when I tell you that was something that kind of opened my mind, like, wow. Like the body is crazy, you know. Something as simple it, as shut how it happened, it can yeah. shut you shut you down completely. It was it happened on my my second. We was on the goal line, a second touchdown attempt, and I never forget. I I think the guard maybe got pushed back, and I had to jump. I had to jump over him, right? And as soon as I, I came down, a deep tackle was coming, right, oh, and geez. and grabbed me, and, and he fell. I fell on my side, and he landed completely on me. Boom. Boom. And I didn't really think too much of it then, and at, even after after the game later on that day, I was sitting around. I made a move. I was like, "Whoa!" I felt like a sharp pain. I was like, "Oh, what, what, what was that? That didn't feel right," you know. So didn't really think too much about it. Monday come around, and I remember getting up, raising up out the bed, and I tried to I pull my right leg. And I tried to move my left leg over, and it was stuck. Like it was like it was paralyzed. I couldn't move it. And then it kind of went away, and I, I stood up and walked around. Didn't really think too much about it. Then went into a facility. I worked out, did squats, I did everything right. And um, I told the trainers about it, and it was like, okay, we're gonna watch it and let us know how it feel. Come Wednesday, we get out there for walkthrough, right? And you know, Russell he calls outside outside zone play, and I stepped to the left for my landmark. I stepped to the left. And like for me, my walkthrough is, is pretty much like a three quarter speed. Yeah. Type, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So I stepped to the left and I fell flat on my face. Boom. Like my leg just shut down. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so shit. that's a up, serious. Is, is that like yeah. your first bad injury kind of? Uh, Like to that magnitude. Did you have you to have an saying? operation for that? No, no. I didn't. Thank God. They they wanted me to. Um, yeah, but I was like, exactly. Of I was course. like, uh, I want to yeah. just, you know, ride it out, see how it, it heals. What, what would you do? Traction? You just like lay down, just let it heal on its own. Then. Yeah, that's the, that's why I am doing. It took it took a while though, because I kept it's freak going genetics going in. But uh, <laughs> kept going, yeah, kept going in to check it. <laughs> yeah. 
I was like, oh, well, the rest of us have to have surgery. That, that X-Men shit, that Wolverine shit. <laughs> What'd you do? I just drank some milk and woke up fine, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is a different, it's like, yeah. It's just, it's just different animal. Age, but age, shout out to technology, because now, like, if guys, like, back in the day, you tear, 10 years ago, you tear your ACL, you're... You're done, especially as a run back. Done, yes. like the Trail Davis days. You're oh done. God, MCL, yeah. ACL, PCL. You're screwed. Like Bo Jackson, remember the whole hip yeah, thing? Man. Yeah, that was crazy. Right? If it was today, Bo's still playing. Yeah. Bo's year off, has surgery. You, <clears throat> might be the biggest freak of all time. Yeah, like you talked to anybody he's, out there, like Bo's biggest freak of all. Even Deion Sanders recently yeah. in an interview, they yeah. said biggest freak. He goes, I was a freak. Yeah, and he goes, and we were we were at the same time FSU and Auburn. And he goes, and I heard about Bo Jackson, and he's like, I'm going to show him what's up. And he, mm -hmm. he talked about it. They show the highlight. And uh, Bo Jackson has a sweet play, and he's coming out, and Deion's like, I'm about to light this fool up. He no, goes sorry. to tackle him. Dude, Bo, boom, yeah. stiff arm. He's yeah. like, God. Well, his, I worked with him yeah. for a week. His fingers are that fat. He's 245 Bo? without lifting weights. Yeah. Six, one. I think that was a different Bo. That's like the Bo that <laughs> eats fast food. <laughs> no, but, no, no, he no. was a big dude. He, was, he weighed exactly. He told me, because this is, this is 25 years ago. He said, I weigh exactly as much as I did. And he never lifted weights. Mm -hmm. Never did shit. He would just strap it on and go. That's what he told me. He was just like, yeah, there's some freak freaks. freaks. Well, yeah. I know I'm be tuning in Dance with the Stars now, man. You got to. I've, I've always, always been a fan from out. the outside. Yeah. Even though you beat us 50 to 3 and yeah. all in the past. All right. I get it. Yeah. But uh, we appreciate you coming on, it man. Gave you, it gave yeah. you a barometer of where yeah. you stand versus no problem. Where, oh, I was like, where one of the greats stands. Oh, uh, NFL's not for me. Yeah. 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 Last question Is there any other running back that you look at that kind of awes you? Or I mean, people would put you in the top five, top ten of all time. What? What is there anybody that you kind of like all time? You're saying? Yeah. Or you're saying now? All time. All time. Like all time? Yeah. Okay. So what's the question? Who are you? <laughs> who? who, who are the, was there a running back you ever tried to model yourself after, or are you just your own thing? Uh, I was just my own thing, but guys that inspired me mm. was like Walter Payton watching his film. You know, um, I was not as elusive as Barry Sanders, but. Who don't? Who's Hell not yeah. inspired by him, right? Yeah. Barry Oklahoma Sanders, State, yeah, um, yeah. Emmitt Smith. Um, you know, me being a taller back. You know, Eddie George and oh, yeah. those type of guys. Terrell Davis, yep. like his story and how he came from special teams and just grind that hard work, right? Yeah. Yep. Guys like that really, uh, in, in, you know, inspired me. But funny thing is, too, like we talk about my style and how I say I've always played aggressive, like yeah. aggressive like that. Um, Think about going up there to the University of Texas and watching Ricky run that ball. Yeah, Ricky Williams. On you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ricky you, you Williams. Know, before you, you know who rem you re the closest I've seen, and he didn't have the same NFL career, but the closest I've seen to you recently would be Fournette for LSU. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. went to Tampa, but he, he runs similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. He runs hard. Yeah, man. he runs, he well, runs I really, I think, really I hard. I think any of those guys, when I, if I asked them the same question, that you'd be in their list too. So I would <laughs> hope so, man. You I, would be. <laughs> I, I played yeah. the game to uh, – to leave a stain and you know memories for years. people to mission people. accomplished 14 moment. years with good knees and now you're taking on dancing Stop we it. wish you the yeah. best we know you got to roll because yeah. you got to you got to this, this is your life now you got to rush out of here to do rehearsals yeah i gotta do that but you know i got to tell everybody to tune in tomorrow yes um eight eastern seven central time you can also vote uh you can uh text adrian to 21523 up to 10 times and then you can also um, go online and vote at dancingwiththestars.abc.com. And you can vote up to 10 well, times. Well, we're voting too. for you. I don't Finally, kid fans, else. vote yeah, for him. It. Make sure we get, yeah. get you into the finals. Else. Yeah, Make Adrian Peterson. Adrian! Woo! <laughs> Appreciate you coming on, man. Good no luck. Problem. Yeah, man. That Thanks was for best. having me. That was great. Yeah.